Hey everybody, how's it going? So we're doing an update video tonight on the uh, how to handle that elephant's foot, and uh, this was an update video. Um, I posted this a couple days ago, talking about three different ways to handle the elephant's foot, and, a, and a, um, one of the users had posted a comment about, hey, how come we didn't talk about the elephant foot compensation idea maker? And uh, I completely overlooked it. That's why. Um, it's, a, it's a fairly new feature in 4.3.0. Um, I think I've used it maybe once or twice and I've always just handled it in some other way and I completely overlooked it So whoever the user was that pointed that out Thank you when I made the video private so I could come back here and make the update it got rid of the comment And so uh, I have forgotten your name and I am so sorry and I want to uh, whoever that was Thank you again for for pointing that out so that I can make the update video So let's jump into it. So instead of the three ways that we can handle the elephant's foot There are four ways we can handle the elephant's foot and the last two are really um pretty much the same thing but idea but you can handle the slightly different idea maker but um first first and foremost if you have access to the cad files uh or if it's a part you've designed on your own uh things like that then to me um probably the easiest way that i like to handle it is by adding a chamfer to the bottom surface whatever it's going to be touching the build plate uh i add a chamfer and so to do that uh, let's delete that let's delete that what I do essentially is pick that whole bottom surface, I go to modify, and I go to um, chamfer, and I'll do something like a 0.5, maybe up to a one millimeter, just sort of depending on which nozzle size I'm printing with and which filament I'm printing with. Um, I generally print with a 0.6 nozzle, and so, you know, that, that uh, 0.5 chamfer usually does the trick. Um, and so you can see here, right, it, it lays in this 45 degree chamfer, it's a half a millimeter, um, half a millimeter chamfer and so when it lays in those first couple of layers then this angle ends up being pretty close to 90 at that point and so if you're trying to do something where you're printing um, you know it's a print in place hinge or something that's got a spin or you're press spinning this into something else then adding that chamfer does a, a pretty good trick and then it also when I pick that bottom surface it actually does the holes as well so if you're sliding something in here if there's a press fit part that goes in then you um, you know you're avoiding that whole thing of this potentially welding itself together in your first layer so to me that's the the most bulletproof thing you can do is probably add that that's the simplest and then you just export this and print it with all your normal stuff right all your normal settings now if you don't have access to the CAD files and you need to do it in idea maker then here are the three ways you can do it in idea maker so if we pop over here let's first talk about um, I, which I think which is what I would default to in my next scenario if it was really important to me to not have the elephant's foot and I didn't want to spend a bunch of time sort of post-processing um, I would go ahead and spend the extra time and add a raft, right? So instead of doing a normal platform edition where it was just a skirt, I would roll over here and I would do a raft. Um, and the raft is essentially a throwaway, a throwaway structure, right? So it's going to print a raft on your bed first, and then it's going to print your part on top of your raft. Um, and so all of your elephant's foot artifacts are in your raft that you don't care about, and your part is printing on top of the raft. So then you basically, when you're done, you peel the two away, throw the raft in the garbage, and you got a good... Um, theoretically pristine part so the way that works is right we set the raft up uh, we specify uh, how much bigger we want the raft to be than our part right so I've got a five millimeter offset so five millimeters on all sides it'll be bigger than my part um, raft gap from model so this is an air gap right so when the raft's done printing you don't want to start printing right on top of the the last layer that is essentially going to weld your part to the raft and it's going to be a bear to pull them away so that air gap provides a little bit of extra Z hop essentially for that first layer and it's allowing gravity to do its thing and sort of lightly lay down enough of uh, enough filament to keep it stuck in place while it's printing the rest of the part this is one that you'll have to maybe play with a little bit I've found like a 0.15 maybe a 0.2 is okay um, you know if you go too much lower than essentially gravity and heat take hold the the filament drops down to the raft and if you're if you're typically any shorter than this it does a really good job in welding itself to the next layer if you don't want it to. So, um, so the 0.15 air gap is usually actually pretty good. Um, I would suggest doing some tests like a 20 millimeter, um, you know, one of those 20 millimeter calibration cubes and do that on top of a raft and play with this um, gap a little bit just to see what's best to sort of pull things apart. <clears throat> the second layer Z lift is, a, is basically redundant to this. You wouldn't want to use these two things in conjunction. Um, I do not play with this. Um, I, I, I only play with this. Um, this essentially does the second layer and does an extra Z lift for your second layer and 
Um, I have done this a couple of times and it's come out um, worse than I would have expected it to. Um, but just sort of tweaking this one has been plenty enough for me. And then this tick box to keep holes in the raft structure. So if you have big holes in the raft structure, it'll basically, or, or in your part, it'll project those through to your raft so that you're not printing a whole bunch of raft material underneath holes that aren't, that you don't need support underneath. And I'll show you that here in the preview in just a second. Then you have these three tabs here where you have some finer control over your first layer, ta uh, first layers of the raft, the middle layers of the raft, and the surface layers of the raft. And you can actually save some time so you're not printing a, you don't, you don't necessarily really want to be printing a solid structure here. You don't need it. It's a waste of material. And so idea makers sort of identified that and given some options here. So in this scenario, I'm doing two layers of the raft, two first layers of the raft. I'm printing them pretty slow at 20 millimeters a second. Um, I'm, I'm over extruding just a hair to give this thing some good uh, adhesion to the bed. And I'm, and I'm printing with a 0.24 layer height instead of my standard. And it doesn't matter, it doesn't print this thing any faster um, because this is, remember, we're, we're, we're detailing the number of layers here. So if you're doing a, two layers at a 0.1 or if you're doing two layers at a 0.2, whatever, it's really not saving you any time to print at a higher layer height. It's adding structure to the raft, okay? So don't think that if you if you specified that and you know change this to a, a a taller layer height that you're going to save any time in your print that those those don't translate like you would normally in your in a normal printing of your part right so anyway I digress uh, and then that first layer infill ratio is 33 percent so this is basically just sort of laying down a skeleton structure of the raft and then I'm going to get into my middle layer so middle layer I'm doing one middle layer. A little bit faster at 30 millimeters a second. I'm over extruding that just a hair, right, still, and then with that 0.24 layer height. So this is going to run 90 degree and then a 50% infill, and I'm running 90 degree perpendicular to the last layer that went down. So this is adding uh, a bit more uh, interior structure to this raft. It's laying it down perpendicular to the last two layers that just came up. And then for my surface layers, I'm doing two of those, and I'm saying run it at 60 millimeters a second, normal extrusion width normal layer height, and I'm doing an infill ratio of 85%. So I'm not printing this thing solid where the lines are going to be side by side. There's going to be a tiny bit of a gap in between them. You don't need to print this solid. Um, in fact, that little extra um, distance makes it a bit easier to separate the parts. Uh, and I'm printing this 30 degrees on an angle from my, last, uh, from my last layer, and I'm doing a normal flow right here. So essentially these last two layers are just kind of normal printing, right, in my case. So let's, okay, let's slice, let's see what this looks like here. And then we'll go into the other two options. Now wraps do add some time, right? So this, this part normally prints in about an hour and 35 minutes. So I've added about 10 minutes here. Um, but it, again, if the elephant's foot is an issue that you want to tackle, then to me, this is the, the second best way to tackle it, right? Um, so here's the raft, right? We see it overhangs the structure by five millimeters and it overhangs the holes by five millimeters, right? Now you can see here, this one has projected that hole down because uh, into the raft so that you're saving a little bit of material here. Um, but this hole over here does not because this hole is smaller. It's probably right at 10 millimeters. And so when you say, you know, overhang it by five, it's basically sealing itself up. Now, if you've got a big part and you got a big hole in the middle of your part and you're printing that on a raft, well then why, why print a raft in the middle there? It's not gonna help you. That will for sure take more time and more material that's not really required. So that's why that tick box is there. Let's go ahead and roll this all the way down to the beginning so we can see. So here's our first two layers of the raft, right? 33% infill, that's why there's the big gap. It's a 0.24 layer height. Um, goes down pretty, pretty quick and dirty. And then the middle layer is now perpendicular to that. It's a 50% infill ratio, right? Comes down, provides a little bit more structure. And then we got our final two layers here which are rolling in at 85% um, infill, right? So again, you still see daylight through here. Um, and right from there, you'll have that 0.15 millimeter air gap between your part and the raft, and then your part just prints. So the, we the, the, reason, the reason I like this one is because all of your elephant's foot stuff is down here in the raft, which you don't care about, right? You're gonna, throw, you're gonna peel it off and throw it away. And so once you get up here, the elephant's foot issue is not an issue, and it just prints your part. And you get a pretty good looking part at this point. So if it's really important to you, um, this this one, and, and you don't have access to the CAD files, I, I like this option the best, frankly. Um, and then if you don't want to use a raft, if it's if it's kind of important to you and not super important to you, the other way you can do it is by, um, well, let's let's there's 
you can on the layer tab here both options are here on the layer tab so this elephant foot compensation you can tick that box and you can specify in this case um, you want to specify a negative value so and you need to do a little bit of test here so here's my recommendation you print a, a 20 by 20 calibration cube um, straight onto the bed and then you peel that thing off and you grab some calipers and you measure uh, where that part was touching the bed and how much bigger it is and that's the difference of what you want versus what you got is what you should put in here so let's just say it was a let's just say it was a half a millimeter bigger um, because of the elephant's foot issue then you would say negative 0.5 uh, and that would be for the contour so that's everything around the outside of the part right and then uh, x and y compensation for holes so it gives you some finer control over the holes and in this case, if you were press fitting something into a hole in the middle of the part, you would want to do the same thing. And so in that case, you're going to have that XY compensation. Let's see if it actually shows anything in the preview. It might actually. And let's come all the way down here. It's, it probably won't though. Oh, well, I have the chamfer. Oh, I saw the chamfer in the part. Um, do I? No, I don't. I don't think I do. Sorry, close preview. Yeah, there's no chamfer here. So you do see a little bit of a um, of a change in the part there where it's squashing this thing a half a millimeter in the preview. And you can tell just slightly by, from that first layer. Now again, remember, this only tackles the first layer, which is why I sort of shy away from, from this one and the next option, which is because it only tackles the first layer. Um, I like the chamfer because it sort of handles it in a gradual fashion, at least the first couple of layers. And then I like the wrap because it's essentially non, not there. So here's our first layer, right? So keep an eye on the size. And if we roll up one more, it grows just a smidge and then rolls up. So you can see on the, on the profile here, let me move this over. Sorry for all the, oh, that looks horrible. Um, you can see just a little bit, there's a half a millimeter, uh, negative offset in here. So that's to handle the elements, but so that's how you can use that one. And then the next way that you can do it, the, 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 the fourth and final way is, which essentially does the same thing. Um, so if I turn this off is to mess with your flow rate. Right, so typically your first layer flow rate is something like 100 or 100, maybe 105, 110% in normal cases because you want to promote adhesion to the bed. So you're overflowing your first your first layer to make sure that you are um, adhering to the to the build platform. So, but this inevitably is gonna is gonna present itself in an elephant's foot scenario. Right, there's no way around it. So you can tweak this by going down to your normal flow rate or even something less like a 95% flow rate or a 90% flow rate. Um, and, and that will help reduce the elephant's foot as well. Um, I would say in this scenario, if you're going to mess with your flow rate on your first layer, I would also just a bit tune down your speed. So the elephant foot compensation and the flow rate playing with basically do the same thing. They only talk about, they only affect the first, the very first layer of the part, uh, which is why I don't love using them. Um, but do whatever you want. Um, those to me are the four ways, thank you, uh, that we can, uh, tackle the elephant's foot. So there you go. I hope this is helpful to somebody and we'll see you on the next one.